struggle and wrestle and match with God. It's, it's really interesting to ask a few questions about it, about what it tells us about how we can encounter with God. Um, the first question is, is, what preparation did Jacob do? Then the second is, um, did he get what he bargained for, what he expected? And thirdly is, how come he got what he got and what did happen? And, and what does it tell us about the way that the Lord encounters us when we come to, to encounter him and engage with him? So um, the first question is, how did Jacob prepare? I mean, you've got to bear in mind that like back in the day, they were um, in the Old Testament, there was all sorts of rituals and preparation around preparing to come into the holy place of God. They didn't have the blood of Christ um, that covered them, so they couldn't, it was lethal um, and fatal to, to look into God's face. And they also had to, even to come anywhere near in, in the temple, they had to cover themselves and so on. Um, but Jacob didn't do any of that. He, he met the man and he wrestled. Um, but if you, if you read a few chapters back, actually, he didn't just meet the man and wrestle. He had experienced a change in his life or shown a change in his behaviour and attitude. Um, when he was born, um, he was born with holding on to his brother's heel. And he was called a, a grasper and a deceiver. And he, he kind of spent his life manipulating. He was very kind of Machiavellian, really. Um, spent his life manipulating situations to his own advantage, trying to seize hold of blessings, the material blessings, um, rather than trusting and waiting on the Lord for them at the right time. And um, so he duped his brother out of the birthright, out of the blessing through his father and so on. And his, his cousin Laban, he went to stay. He, he ended up married, marrying both his daughters and taking most of his livestock. Um, so he was a, a, an, an enmity with his brother Esau and with Laban. But shortly before this encounter with God, we see that Jacob actually makes efforts to reconcile with Esau. He does reconcile with Esau and also with Laban. So it's almost like he has already had a change of heart somehow and has engaged and sort of started out in a ministry of reconciliation before he has this encounter, just before he has this encounter with God. Um, and perhaps that's why it happens at night so that he doesn't actually have see God face to face, which would be fatal. Um, rather, it happens at night and God shows mercy to him by, by ending the wrestling match and the encounter just before daybreak, as we read. So, so, so God shows mercy to Jacob in spite of Jacob's seriously flawed character, um, because Jacob has, has started a journey of, of reconciliation there and, and change. Um, he seeks a blessing from God and he gets one. But this is a kind of the second question is, is what, what kind of blessing is it to be disabled for your, the rest of your life? Especially in a kind of society where there's no universal credit, there's no disability benefits or anything like that. Um, he was crippled. Um, so I think that kind of tells us that when we encounter God, it, it doesn't always work out um, based on our agenda. You know, sometimes the Lord has got other things in mind for us. And I think when we pray, you know, your will be done, or I surrender to you, Lord, let's pray that um, we actually mean that. And we're actually open to, to uh, Jesus talks about us as, as the vine, and sometimes he has to prune us in order to shape us and make us who he needs us to be, who he wants us to be. And we, But the thing about Jacob, he does trust God for his for his salvation and and for his blessing. So he does leave it change a changed man, but he also has a new name, and, and he's no longer the grasping, deceiving, manipulator Jacob. He's Israel, which means struggles with God or encounters God. So, so we can trust God, and I pray that as each of us encounters God in our days today, that the Lord would meet us where we're at. He would give us everything that we need and that we would submit to him that his perfect will will be done in our lives. In Jesus' holy name.